talking here with uh, Dr. Ian Hale, who speaks all over the world, is a poet, is an author, who's about to tell us about his wonderful book, The Insider's Guide to Autism and Asperger's. Tell us about your book. Um, it's a very funny story. Uh, I, I was talking to a friend of mine, um, two or three years ago, we were just having a, a, a drink, and uh, he mentioned that his granddaughter um, has autism. And he and myself and his wife um, talked about this over a number of weeks. And after that number of weeks, he turned to me one evening and said, um, Ian, you've got, a, you've got an awful lot to say about autism. You've told the two of us um, a great deal about it and about your own experiences, both professionally as a teacher and personally as someone who, you know, is very much on the spectrum. Um, you've really helped our granddaughter. Why don't you try and help other people? And I said, well, what have you got in mind? And he said, why don't you write a book about it? You, you've got a lot of words, so just write them down. And he said, I'll... I'll I'll give you one year from today, and I'll bet you a pint that you don't do it. So if you do it within one year today, I'll buy you a pint. And that's why I sat down and started writing that book. And I did get my pint. <laughs> Was it Guinness, though? That's the question. Uh, no, I, 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 no, it's, it, it wasn't. It's, uh, it was a, a Spanish beer, actually, which I am to like. Oh, what's the name of the beer? Um, Mao. M-A-H-O-U. Oh, nice. You know, you work as an educational consultant, and what, are the, what is the biggest roadblock you run into at an educational institution that you're trying to help out? Like, what is a, what is a big roadblock that you, Dr. Ian Hale, as an educational consultant, run into? Ritual. The, the concept of, we've always done it this way, um, this is the only way that it can be done. Um, people who are, they're not open to ideas, and if, they're, if one suggests something to them that's, been, that's different, and this is particularly true, and I'll be particularly critical of England, the attitude there is that we have always done it this way, we always will do it this way, and anybody who suggests any different way um, is criticizing us, and therefore we regard that person as being hostile and, and, and not being a positive contributor. That no criticism or observation is treated as positive if it goes against what they've been doing for the last 500 years or however it might be. Um, closed closed minds and, closed and minds. i'm afraid that's still very true today teachers like mrs crawford who are prepared to make the effort and i remember another brilliant english teacher i had mr parfit um who was a, a mentor and later on mr hiscox when i was much much older in in high school um but they are they are few and far between now, unlike me, Ian, you've traveled all over the world speaking, consulting, lecturing. Tell, yes. tell us, because I don't travel much, and tell our audience what you've noticed about the attitudes toward neurodiversity among the different countries and regions you've traveled to. Is there a difference or are they all the same? What do you think? There are vast differences. Um, I've, I've not had any experience. I mean, I have been to America, but not for more than more than well over twenty years, probably near thirty years. And I and I do want to travel and talk in America and research there as well, very much. Well, when you come to Florida, we'll go for a pint. Family. We'll go for a pint when you come to Florida. Uh, I would very much like to. I have good friends in Florida anyway. My, my business partner, David Burkhart of Alembic Enterprises, 
who is a total genius in every area. Um, he lives in Miami-Dade, Florida, and I urge everyone to to have a look at what David David's work is. Well, you introduce um, him to me. I'm right in Fort Lauderdale. We're only about forty minutes away, so I will I will certainly do that, sir. I will. But uh, so I can't speak for America, but yes, I, I, I've been to Scandinavia, to Sweden, to Norway, to Denmark. Um, the attitude there is light years away from Britain. It is completely hands on. They completely understand the the vital part of a successful outcome for anybody who's of a different brain. That early diagnosis and early intervention are absolutely crucial um, that they study it both educationally socially they study the genetics of it they, they study the the clinical medicine of it that they provide an extraordinary amount of help in schools that they provide benefits to make sure these people will will never um, be short of money. Uh, the same is true in, is in Switzerland. Um, Holland are a good example of a very hands-on country. Um, Germany are. Um, Russia. Hungary, I've noticed as well, are, are very, very um, advanced in, in their attitudes and, and their treatment. Um, the same applies to Romania, though I'm sure a lot of people will find that surprising. Um, Estonia is another one of the, the ex-Soviet bloc countries, which is um, very go-ahead and is, is looking very much towards the, the coming tech revolution, the, the e-revolution, if you want, and is um, educating and uh, looking at their... Uh, different brained people um, as part of the engine of that development. Um, there, there are other countries, and I don't want to be sort of too rude, but there, there are countries, particularly in the Middle East and in other parts of the world, um, that regard it as a family shame and somebody with autism will be or can be locked away for life um, and that person will not be acknowledged as a human being um, so that that's that's the vast range of experience that that i can i can tell you about from the from the very good to the Appallingness. I can only use that word. And discrimination against against neurodiverse people. Very enlightening. And I've met plenty of I've met, met plenty of uh, discrimination and negativity. Um, and indeed, when I was a kid, bullying. Um, you know, in England, and, and I know from the experiences of friends in America that that they suffered from bullying, and I know that a lot of um, different brained people around the world do but that again is something that scandinavia and germany in particular that i've experienced um are very very careful to protect um neurodiverse children from and, and of course it doesn't stop as a child um people go into the workplace bullying goes on into the workplace bullying bullying like autism is not something that can be grown out of but it is something that can be taught um, how to deal with. I mean, the way I did it, I learned a martial art when I was 17, 18, and I was a, a big, strong rugby player. So I didn't get too much of that problem. Oh. But I've seen it happen to a lot of people, and I've heard a lot of stories from, you know, autistic and other differently brained people, you know, during my professional years as an educator. And some of those stories, um, you know, made me made me cry. I'll be honest. And and some of those stories, including my own, um, form aspects of the poetry that I write. Well, I want to get um, into that before I get into the poetry. Okay. 
because I played rugby for 10 years up in Boston. And when the uh, team from too. England would come over, they would kick our butts. It wasn't even a contest a lot of the time. What position did you play? Hooker. Oh, I figured that. Very cerebral position. Yeah, I'm, I'm not very tall, but I was I was quite bulky, and I, I spent a lot of time with weights from the time I was about 14 or 15. So I was I was quite, um, you know, I was quite, I was quite cuboid. <laughs> I was a cube. <laughs> now, what I would like to know from you for our audience is how your different brain, let's call it autistic or Asperger's, or as you say, Asperger, um, how does it affect your poetry? Um... Uh, a hundred percent. If I, if I, if I wasn't what I am, um, my poetry would be different. The, the first book of poems that have been published now, and again, they're they're available as eBooks, paperbacks from, you know, the usual distributors and online. And well, and hold on, them. hold on. Tell the our first, audience. First, tell our audience some of the names of these different works and your books and your poems, but why don't you tell us how people can find these things and find out more about you and you know, let's take a minute to do a commercial on you because I want people oh, to I... know the names of the books, the names of the works, how they get you, how they find you. Let's go. Um, if you Google Dr. Ian Hale, that's the first way to find me. Uh, the book on autism is called The Insider's Guide to Autism and Asperger's. The first poetry book is called Emotional Exile, um, because that was the best title to describe my experience of being an Asperger, of being Asperger's syndrome. Um, I've described the experience as like living inside a greenhouse. You you can hear and see, um, you know, the, the way people are living and interacting and everything with each other. And the door is, is there so that you, you know, there's a little bit of communication. But at the end of the day, you, you're still an outsider. And that, that's why I've called the book Emotional Exile. And the, the second book of poems um, is called Dance with the Desert. And it was uh, David Burkhart, the man I mentioned in Miami, um, who's designed and created the covers for those two books, the two poetry books. The cover for the autism book, which is, again, seriously striking, was uh, created by Mr. Stuart Watson, who lives near London now, um, who's simply the best graphics, um, Photoshop user, and general computer guy that I know and ever have known. And he's a brilliant man, brilliant young man. Um, Dance with the Desert is is more, it's less autobiographical than um, emotional exile. It's more it's more wistful, I think, and it's more it's more descriptive and it's more about the natural world as well as about my inner world. But also my experiences and what people have told me of of their inner worlds, whether they be different brained people or not. It's it, it's a, a gentler book than Emotional Exile, but they both had fantastic reviews from from very very um, you know important reviewers. Uh, one of them was kind enough to uh, well, an English reviewer, in fact, for. A, Dance with the Desert compared me with uh, Keats and T.S. Eliot. Um, I can only say I'm extremely flattered. Wow. And currently I'm trying to write the, the third of that intended trilogy because the, the poetry books um, are supposed to be initially three, and I, I want to write a lot more poetry books. Um, and the, the trilogy is called Journeys. So contacting me www.ianchalephd.com. That will take you to the 
autism book and uh, Dr. Ian Hale, Emotional Exile, Dr. Ian Hale, Dance with the Desert will take you to the two poetry books. And now, you see, your, your poetry and writing is being compared to T.S. Eliot, Keats, and uh, I get compared to like the Three Stooges. I mean, you know, there's a difference between us. Oh, you don't know what the Three Stooges are over there. That was in my childhood. That was a TV show with three funny guys who oh, yeah, yeah, weren't, I weren't too know. bright. I forgot about the cultural divide between us, you see. That's oh, no, but we, we, we did see those films on English TV. I, 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 I've seen a couple of them, yeah. Okay. Yes, I favored Curly. Uh, no. <laughs> now, before we go, I wanted to ask you, what is one message that you would like all of our differentbrains.com viewers and listeners and readers what is the one message that you, Dr. Ian Hale, would like to give them? When you come across someone with a different brain, try to find out how they communicate best. It, it might be by, they might play you a song that expresses their feelings. They might, they might do shadow puppeting on the wall that expresses their feelings. They might they might sing. I'm a great believer. For example, I think one of the one of the things that uh, is really helpful, as far as I'm concerned, at least, is to is to sing in public. I mean, I'm not saying it's good, but it it's a, a wonderful hobby and it it helps with self expression. Um, some differently brained people will will draw, and I've I've met a number of those and express themselves that way. Um, the the secret. And what I, what I want to get over to everybody is that we are different, not inferior, that autism is not a disease, there is no cure, it's a different state of mind, it's a, a different perspective of the world, and it's as valid as anybody else's, and, and that includes anyone with a different brain, whether they be bipolar or schizophrenic or Asperger's or whatever else it is, they see the world from a different angle, respect that, learn from it as they will learn from you. So the plea that I shout out to the world, listening, tolerating, tr communicating, sharing that is that's what i want to tell people very well said we've been speaking with dr ian hale and uh this is dr hacky reitman with another episode of exploring different brains ian it's been a great pleasure thank you so much for being with us oh it's been a great pleasure for me to to meet you and, and a, a great pleasure to say hello to the viewers as well been very very enjoyable and I thank you again for the opportunity for more information visit us at differentbrains.com